Got some lumber needing moved on your layout? Maybe you could use a center beam flat car. But from which manufacturer? Well, you're in luck. You have found video three of the product comparison series. This is Dylan Hubbard of RWTX. Today we will take a look at center beam flat cars. Anything from couplers and weights and other handy additions will all be a part of this side-by-side -side comparison. Now let's get rolling. I'm going to start something new today. Um, yeah, I believe that it is a important consideration for many on the packaging that these products come in. Um, so here's a look at the packaging. Um, you'll notice that first car was a McKeon. That's a company no longer in business. Um, it comes in a, a cardboard, you know, a thin cardboard, uh, white and red box. Um, nothing, nothing too special. It's not better than these new cars, especially. Um, so here's actually opening the boxes and taking the items out. Um, they all have the plastic um, form pressed, I guess you call it, um, packaging with a thin little plastic um, sheet that goes over them. Something that I did notice is Atlas and Xactrail, the next car, have a small piece of foam, just one little added extra uh, buffer to keep things from moving around too much. And here we'll get to the last car exact rail and um, it's, you gotta like the packaging, but as we're going to see, there's plenty more to check out. <laughs> Apparently you're not supposed to hold them from the top, but as you can see, I removed some paint out of the out of the little cracks and was able to get these things glued back in. So um, that's that's what you're seeing right now. Okay, so now that I'm done uh, doing repairs, we'll get to this. Uh, first, a Walther's mainline um, 73 foot center beam car. You'll notice some of these cars are 73, some are 63. This car is mostly um, metal and plastic, uh, metal chassis. There you can see the weight as well. After that, we got a McKeon. This is a 63 foot center beam car. Um, plastic everywhere except for the um, metal weight underneath, and it's a kit, so take the details with what you want. Very little weight as well. Up next, we've got an Atlas. This is a 73 foot uh, center beam car. Lots of extra details on this. Um, also some cool details, mainly on the end um, and Atlas couplers. And there you go with the weight, also underweight. All of these have been underweight. Um, up next, we got exact rail. This is a 63 foot. Um, the middle partition and the chassis are metal. The rest is plastic. Also got to like those um, separately colored uh, trucks. And again, very, very light. Now we can take a look at the coupler heights. This one you can see is a little low. That's the kit though. Here we got main line, little low, but pretty close. Atlas seems to be right on. And exact rail, also almost perfect. Next up, I flipped the cars over, and the main thing I want you to see on the bottom side is the width of this beam that goes right down the middle of the car. I have a feeling that that width of that beam plays a role in how sharp these cars can turn. These first two cars have absolutely no problem even on an 18 inch radius curve, but these, even on a wide, can't do it. They still roll, but just not as easily. Now I want you to take a look at the ends of these cars. Um, I mentioned earlier that the exact rail has some pretty good detail on the end. So does the Atlas, and even the Walters has pretty good detail, but the exact rail has really good chain detail. It's a very small chain. And now, like I've done before, we just take a look down at the sides of these cars, get an idea of what they all look like right next to each other. And then I want to zoom in real good on these and really pay attention to the decals. Um, actually, my favorite part of these cars 
has been all of the decals and the warning labels that you see on them. You can read all of them, and uh, it just makes them really interesting to look at. As you can see there, and then on this Walters car as well. Lots of, lots of things to read. So that's all I have for you today. Um, next, I'd like to uh, bring up this graph like I have before, except this graph's a little different. I have added four new categories. Um, I've done that in hopes that I will have um, less ties um, to give people a better understanding of which car works best for them. Uh, unfortunately, even after adding the four categories, I still have a tie today, uh, but I think going forward we'll, we'll see less ties. Being that this is the first um, video with this new graph, let's take a little time to get familiar with it. I added a column f to kind of explain um, the particular aspects of the car that affect that specific category. Also, again, the lowest score is, um, is still the best. Um, the availability category is one I want to point out and explain a little bit. Um, I use the five most common websites and would search on those websites for each specific car. And if I was able to find that specific car in stock, um, that car would get a point. Um, so, you know, the most points in this case would have been five. Um, so in, in this case, the, the more websites that I find a car in stock, the better its score is. Um, so Walther's Mainline, I found on the most websites. The five websites I used were Model Train Stuff, Lombard Hobby, eBay, High Walther Hobby, and Spring Creek Model Trains. I actually wanted to use Walther's.com, but Walther's didn't have any of these uh, cars in stock, not even the Walther's car. That was strange, but we'll move on. So as you can see, we had a tie, but uh, Walters and Alice, um, they, they came out as having the best score. But I do feel after messing with these cars that they are the, uh, the two best options. A couple more things. I mentioned before how light these cars were. Um, you can get loads for them, which would help add weight and you could help hide adding weight as well. Um, Atlas and Walther's makes loads. I'm sure there's plenty of other companies out there that, that make loads. Um, you'll notice the McKeon car at the beginning of the video. Uh, it had a load in it. That was a, um, a scratch-built custom load, so that's also an option. Um, the other thing is Rapido is supposed to be releasing a center beam flat car sometime, I think, within the next few months. Uh, so that would be something to check out as well. Um, I wanted to try and possibly wait to make this video for that, but in the end, this car is the one that I ended up doing. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got some value from it. If you did, please like it. Um, if you want to see more like this, please subscribe. I, I have plenty and plenty of ideas of the cars that I'm wanting to do next. Um, if you have any suggestions, questions, anything like that, just leave me a comment. Or if you want to get a hold of me through Facebook, um, RWTX, you can get me over there. Or on the HO Hub, a Facebook group where I sell all my items. Um, or if you have trains you'd like to sell, if you got a collection, um, get a hold of me through Facebook as well. Um, I think that's all I got for today. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, have a good one.